I'm David Theo Goldberg. I'm uh, now in the Department of Anthropology in the School of Social Sciences uh, at UCI. Uh, I received my PhD more decades ago than I care to admit uh, from uh, the Graduate Center of the City University of New York, which at the time was on 42nd Street in New York, in New York between uh, 5th and 6th Avenues, and received my education as much from 42nd Street <laughs> and everything associated with it uh, as I did from my PhD program in philosophy. Um, I'm coming, I've been at UCI actually for 23 years, having held a joint appointment in the last decade plus uh, between comparative literature uh, and the Department of Anthropology and I've now moved in the social sciences and I've now moved my line completely uh, into the social sciences while keeping zero percent appointments both in comparative literature and in uh, criminal criminology law and society uh, in the School of Social Ecology. Um, my current research um, uh, has been most recently focused on uh, the attacks on critical race theory uh, as they're based on uh, a, a replete form of fabrication uh, on the part of uh, Christopher Rufo and people he's, um, uh, who've supported him uh, that has ge generated all these attacks over the past three years, uh, of course underpinned by uh, Donald Trump's um, wide-ranging uh, public networks. Uh, and I've just published a book called The War on Critical Race Theory with Polity Press as a trade book in 2023, a month ago, uh, taking on directly the forms of argument that have been made, uh, the fabrications that uh, are replete uh, across these and going after them in order to show that they're uh, based on what I call a method of misreading uh, and produce both a, a way of deregulating racism by which I mean that they've removed all the barriers since the Civil Rights Act effectively uh, or in the process of doing that uh, to go after whatever they want then to fill the empty signifiers of critical race theory uh, with whatever uh, jargon-filled, undefined considerations that they want. Um, I'm also uh, now engaged in a slightly different project on the future of liberal arts education, which was funded by the Mellon Foundation. We had a working group for a number of years and produced a website um, that uh, laid out in a kind of report fashion argument for a redesigned form of liberal arts education. And we're in the process, uh, as I speak, in turning that into a, a design-based uh, um, book publication that should be out uh, in the next three or four months. So quite exciting uh, with images and uh, uh, design work attached to the text as well. Uh, I decided to come to UCI um, through a sort of uh, somewhat unusual process. Uh, I applied for and was appointed the director of the University of California Humanities Research Institute, a leading uh, humanities and um, human sciences, uh, qualitative social science uh, research uh, institute across all 10, well, what was then nine, but now all 10 campuses of the University of California. And that institute was based on the campus of UCI and is administered through uh, UCI administration, uh, at which I received also a, uh, a faculty appointment and was able to uh, teach some while I uh, directed the institute for 22 years and stepped down a year ago to take my first sabbatical in 23 years. Um, while I uh, was doing all of this, uh, and actually uh, from my uh, years on 42nd Street and my PhD education, uh, I was involved in making, uh, at the outset, independent movies with my oldest closest friend. We'd known each other since we were five and he was at Columbia Film School uh, getting his master's degree. 
uh, with Miloš Forman of all people, and we created a little independent film company and made independent movies, one of which was in Robben Island in South Africa under the form of apartheid as a metaphor for apartheid, and that won a couple of uh, international film awards, and then got involved very early on in 1982-83 in the making of um, music videos and started off with a music video for Polygram uh, of Curtis Blow's somewhat innocuous song called Basketball, a kind of pian to, to basketball, uh, which turned out arguably to be the first rap video to air on MTV, uh, precisely because it was so politically uh, undisturbing. <laughs> uh, so I think that, that should do it. Uh, I'm thrilled to be in, this, in the School of Social Sciences and with my colleagues uh, in anthropology. Uh, thank you very much.